Hi, this is Ricky Spencer and welcome to another episode of Quests by Community. Today we're going to go on a little bit of a drive. We're driving out on the superhighway all the way down to Gippsland. And on my way to Gippsland, I've just stopped, virtually that is, and I've bumped into a new friend that I've made and his name is Clinton Savage. And Clinton Savage is a remarkable young man who does a lot of work for the Gippsland Pride community. He's one of the founding members of Gippsland Pride. He also is quite an interesting person, that he loves his fitness, loves his football, loves sport, and he also loves IT. So we're going to get a bit of a mixture bag today. Welcome, Clinton. Thank you so much for having me, Ricky. Thank you. You mentioned that you were part of doing a bit of your fitness, mm -hmm. going to the gym. How important is um, fitness for you? So, uh, well, the, my fitness journey is probably realistically only really taken fruition probably within the last two months, um, which has been fantastic for me. Um, it's been a, a real eye opener for me in terms of being active and um, it's had a great effect on me, not only just physically, but mentally allows me to be able to focus on myself and 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 to be my best self mm -hmm. and um, it's been a fantastic journey so far it's only just started but it's uh, i've got a long way to go let's take us a bit of a journey into who is clinton mm -hmm. uh where did you grow up clinton grew up in Shiraogan as well so i've been born and bred and and lived there for all my life but basically um when i did grow up i grew up in a small little uh uh, community called Caligny, um, which is just uh, south of Trelogan. Uh, we, I grew up with a twin sister, a younger sister as well, and uh, my parents were both involved in uh, the local industry, power industry, and also um, the paper industry as well. So it's been uh, an interesting journey mm. for me um, growing up in that area. Um, but also, it's it, uh, it had its challenges also mm. in terms of uh, being quite a conservative type of area. Um, also, living out in the country as well, you're a little bit separated from some of the mainstream things that go on. I was very privileged in terms of the upbringing that I had uh, that my parents were you know, rather comfortable in terms of the, the, the you know, things that they were able to give us children. Yeah, we, we I had a, I had a good childhood. I can't complain about that whatsoever. And what was um, growing up in school like for you? Because at that stage, did you have an idea that you? I see myself as a, a gay man now, um, mm -hmm. in terms of the way who of who I am. I was questioning throughout my high school years, but without the knowledge of knowing of what I was feeling or who mm. I was, I knew that it was different and that it was unusual, um, but it was not something that I could actually be. So I, I was very good at masking and being able to uh, hide the real Clinton mm -hmm. and, uh, and you know, doing the, the things that a, a good conservative boy should do growing up where he should be getting married, having kids, or, you know, you know going after girls and stuff like that. So it was... Um, very conflicting at mm. that stage as well. It was difficult because you didn't really have any gay role models to to go off either. Well, I probably knew what a gay person was, but I didn't know that they could be in relationships or have healthy, you know, healthy mm. healthy relationships or be um, happy or, or 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 anything like that. So it was very unusual for me to to have that type of to be that person, but mm. not being able to actually, you know, to know what it is. In that time growing up in your early, well, late teens, early 20s, was there any visibility in the Gippsland area, like any pride um, spaces, or was it really Melbourne-centric? At that time, and so I obviously grew up, uh, you know, I'm born in 83, so late 80s, 90s, was... Uh, was very quiet in that aspect. Mm. I can't talk so much in terms of what the what the environment and everything like that was like in in those times. But from what I know, it was it, it was very um, heterosexually based. Mm. Um, there would be very very little um, you know community uh, get together in terms of LGBTQI folk at the time, um, and also. Um, as you said as well, it could be very much more Melbourne-centric um, at that time. 
the interesting thing with our region as well is, and and with friends of mine who I know who have actually come out at a later date, mm. is that a lot of them don't stay in the regional areas. Mm. They tend to actually move away to feel safer or to be with community in, for example, Melbourne, rather than in a regional area like where I grew up mm-hmm. in the Latrobe Valley. So, um, so a lot of my friends who were um, gay or non-binary or trans were, were no longer in our area, which is a great loss for our community, mm. but also um, it's, it's a bit sad that they have to leave to feel safe or to be with community or, or to be accepted for who they are. That's an incredible insight. And when you were speaking, I was thinking to myself, I grew up in a period when AIDS and HIV mm-hmm. was stigma. Mm-hmm. that, you know, being gay almost equaled death. Mm-hmm. You grew up a little bit later than me. Was that still something that was that your perception or people around you saw LGBTIQ people as something that was yeah, it riddled was, with stigma or? There was a stigma against, uh, like, uh, against, you know, being you know, of, you know, same-sex attracted or, or, or you know, being non-binary or, or, or even questioning in terms of your, your sexuality or, or gender. It was, uh, you know, it was like you were alien, essentially, in mm. terms of, um, of who you are or what you are in the community, um, which made it extremely hard to be accepted by your community and that's just underlines the fact as to why people may have actually moved away to be accepted by other communities or to be able to be accepted in a more populous area where there'll be more people of that community that they can be able to share that experience with it's um it's a lot better now Mm. and um and i'm of the opinion that that you know we still have a long way to go but there are great steps going in the right direction with things like Gippsland Pride and such mm. like that, which allow us to be able to actually, you know, go out into the community and actually advocate for our community um, uh, on LGBTQI matters. And that's where I wanted to take us, uh, Gippsland Pride. And you were one of the founding members. How did that happen? Was it like a, a time and place that the right people got together and... How did it come about? Yeah, it it wasn't serendipitous or anything like that, but it it it, it did have to take a few different people to actually make it happen. Mm-hmm. Um, our main contributor, and and you're probably aware of Caitlin Grigsby, um, who is a uh, fantastic um, person in our community, um, who leads and um, has got the you know is is probably the most driven person that I know of. In 2018, um, we actually have a roller derby club called the Gippsland Rangers Roller mm. Derby. Um, so they actually uh, decided to uh, do a Pride Cup um, event for their roller derby club. And then afterwards, they decided that what they were going to do is actually have a Pride Gala. Um, and so uh, at that time, they decided to do the Pride Gala in 2019. And it was such a success that this pride initiative really needed to take advantage because we could see that that, that the, the community needed it, mm-hmm. but also that, that that they wanted it, but also you know people wanted to be seen, but also be able to make a difference in the community. That was actually my first ever pride event, and so Caitlin and I had been um, we knew about each other, and we had you know bumped shoulders here and there every now and then to the point where she actually tapped me on the shoulder and said, look, we really want to make this happen. Um, and I know that you do a lot of things in the community within Latrobe Valley. Would you be happy with helping us with, you know, creating Gippsland Pride as an entity on its own? And so we can keep things like the Pride Gala mm. happening on a yearly basis. I dropped everything and said, yes, 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 I want to be involved with this and, um, and, and still happily to this day, um, uh, you know, working with Caitlin, but also so many other people that are around our region. So we've got uh, six different LGAs, uh, local mm. government areas um, that are 
uh, represented by in that area or in, in, in Gippsland Pride. It's growing and it's also, we're, we're doing some really, really great grassroots things for the community and being able to make sure that everyone can be included in those things as well, because I think it's been underrepresented for so many years. It's mm. now time for us to be able to be able to make ourselves seen, but also give places that are safe mm. for our community to be able to take, you know, take advantage of, you know, celebrating and also, you know, um, engaging with others. Tell us a bit more about the Scala Pride. Mm -hmm. When does it happen? Yep. And what's involved? So, um, so we we had our first one, and then sadly, as we all know, something happened in twenty twenty where mm. people couldn't go out or do anything anymore. Um, so it was on hiatus for a few years, and then it um, it came back again in twenty twenty two. It's a fa fantastic night. It's it's basically come in, you have a meal, you have a drink, you have a boogie. Um, you know, everyone's invited. There's um, there's so many things that are available. There's silent auctions. There's everything that you can do within that area, um, and you can just rub shoulders with community. It's a fantastic night. Um, we have uh, available uh, tickets for people who are of uh, you know different communities in terms of things like uh, disability. Um, uh, indigenous communities and such like that as well, but also we, we also provide accessibility for those people as well. Um, so we actually have um, uh, uh, Auslan um, uh, sign, uh, signers. Yeah. Everything's available via public transport. So we actually provide bus services from um, from the main cities to be able to come through from Gippsland uh, or even from the train station in Warrigal, which is the closest area to, you to be able to do so. Um, and it's we make it as, as possible for as many people to be able to make it on, on the night. Every year we seem to find new faces that come along um, and it's just a joyful time for our community to be able to celebrate who we are and what we do. Me being slightly on the spectrum, I'm thinking, okay, how do I get there? You mentioned by train. Mm -hmm. Now, is it something that people need to plan to stay overnight? Yes, it would be. And and uh, there's plenty of um, uh, accommodation and such like that that is available right. in the area. Okay. Um, so um, yeah, in uh, the nearest town is Warrigal, um, which has plenty of uh, availability and, and, and such like that. But you need to book. And it's planning. We'll have a link to the website. There's all information about there, Clinton, that people can go to perhaps contact people if they want the information? All the information's there in terms of the booking, available places to be mm. able to stay, yes. um, also visit, eat, everything like Beautiful. that as well. So we make it as easy as possible for you to be able to plan ahead. And what about in terms of if people feel, is it safe? Is mm -hmm. there, what protections do you have in place? So luckily, uh, Lardner Park is uh, is not located in the actual township itself. So it's actually a secure area. We have plenty of secure security on site as well mm -hmm. um, to make sure of that also. Um, but also the uh, the other aspects of that as well is that we do have uh, things like quiet areas as well for oh, people good. who are auditory or just having a little bit of a hard time. Mm -hmm. We have mental health nurses on 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 site to mm -hmm. be able to assist people in regards to, you know, if they're having any hard times. Um, and also obviously we have, you know, mental, uh, the, as in first aid and everything Beautiful. like that is available as well. What about if those who have children and families, are they, are they encouraged to attend the event? So unfortunately it is only 18 and over um, mm -hmm. because of obviously there's a bit of alcohol and stuff like mm -hmm. that that happen on that, on those types of nights. Um, but um, we do have other facilities um, like we have our Pride Festivals that we ha do as part of the Midsummer Festival mm -hmm. um, uh, that actually um, uh, we do a lot of things. We might go to a park or we do Christmas or and such like that as well. So we have plenty of other events that we do. A gala is probably just our you know, number one ticket item that we do each. I know that you have a real big social media presence mm -hmm. so that if people are more interested, they could, I guess, get in touch with Gippsland Pride Initiative uh, through the website, yep. Facebook, Correct. Instagram, mm -hmm. um, and ask for some, yeah, any information. Yep. And we're, we're, we're on there and we can answer your questions. So get, get on there. If you've got any questions, we'll be more than happy to help you out. I'm now going to go back to something you mentioned before, mm -hmm. and that was that you've, you've had the experience of people who once they've 
were able to authentically disclose and come out to their families who they are, they move away. Mm -hmm. Do you feel now with your presence in Gippsland Pride that people are now staying or moving back to these towns? It's an interesting thing, Ricky, because um, as part of Gippsland Pride, um, we did the Rainbow Brick Road survey, um, uh, or it's probably two years ago now. And uh, an interesting fact in regards to that is that a lot of people who actually partook in our survey actually didn't grow up in the Gippsland area, mm -hmm. but actually did the tree change and moved to Gippsland. Mm. Um, so um, a lot of people are actually moving to those type of regional areas to to get away from the hustle and bustle of the of the of the metro mm. city life. Um, but the interesting thing is is that the the, the community is still there and it's still strong. Um, and that we've we've got some fantastic people um, in our community that um, that contribute day in day out, but also are able to provide us with so much love and um, you know just the energy that you can get from these types of people. But what I'm just trying to say is is that um, it's interesting that. Whilst people are moving away, we are getting some back. So, mm. um, and uh, it's great to see that we were able to still attract people to come down to Gippsland and move mm. down our way, um, and also be contribute to our community that way as well. And that brings me to the next question. Um, as in my other work I do uh, in the older aging uh, queer spaces, is that people are now looking for places to live mm -hmm. and. It's been in the back of my mind before I was always thinking, oh, I'd love to move down to Gippsland. Is there are places still affordable for rent for people compared to, say, inner Melbourne? Yeah. For that what you're aware of? Yeah, so um, there's no uh, doubt that rent and such like that is a bit cheaper in the country areas. But that doesn't mean that we haven't had our skyrocketing rent mm. prices and such like that, much like what you see in in, in Melbourne areas. So um, even myself, I'm a renter and 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 still have to deal with you know ongoing rent increases and such like that, mm. um, which you know unfortunately sometimes you just have to put up and and and, and deal with it. Sure. But uh, there are people who are not as advanced as or not as uh, privileged as I am. Who are able to afford rent and such like that as well. So it's, it's it is um, an ongoing concern mm. in terms of you know things like homelessness and such like that. People not having a roof over their head mm. or take or just doing it rough um, is is always still a concern, especially in Gippsland in that in that aspect. But um, it's um, it's yeah. I, I'd like to say like to think that things were going to get better, but it's you know it's still an ongoing concern. So if there were people of any age who are interested perhaps in moving to Gippsland, mm -hmm. would, could they reach out to say Gippsland Pride Initiative for a yarn and oh, yeah. say, oh, what do you recommend? What are the suburbs to live in? Mm -hmm. What are the facilities, health facilities like? Yes. And have that conversation. So we've recently uh, at the end of uh, 2022 opened our Gippsland Pride Hub which is uh, located in Trafalgar, so right in the centre of uh, Gippsland, um, easily accessible by train as well and, mm. um, and, and everything like that. So it's, um, we are only are there on a part-time basis at the moment and um, we're still finding our feet with that particular location, but it allows us to be able to have that presence or a place for someone to pop in say hello mm. um so um and daniel bryant who you probably know well um who, who's our um our, our community liaison is doing that really really well we're blessed to have our actual our, our open space but if you're needing assistance with anything like health um as you said um you know living or even if it's just a case of just wanting to actually sit down have a cuppa and, and just a a quick yarn you know, we're able to assist you in that aspect. And now I want to ask you a little bit more about your work because mm -hmm. I know you you love IT mm -hmm. and that's your – what actually is your role so where you work? I work at Aussie Broadband mm -hmm. So um, and I've been there, uh, well, it'll be coming up five years very soon. Um, but I, before that I was working for Telstra for about 16 years. So I've had a lengthy mm. uh, um, uh association with telecommunications um but uh yeah I, I 
I've really found my my uh, my place at Aussie Broadband. They're very inclusive, um, mm. very welcoming, um, but also uh, 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 really doing fantastic things, grassroots, but also within the organisation for LGBTQI uh, folk um, to make them feel safe and be able to you know be the best that they can be in a work environment. And the reason why I mention it is because there'd be people listening who think, you know, I'm really wanting to work. Maybe I want to move up to mm-hmm. that side of town. There's quite a few uh, organisations that are quite open nowadays in terms of that, uh, of, of acceptance and such like that. Um, I, being rather biased with Aussie Broadband and, and, mm. and they've helped me on my journey, we've had quite a few people through their journey as well. They really do... Uh, encompass it from top to bottom in terms of the organisation. Um, the senior leadership and everything like that are so supportive of us um, as what we call Aussie Pride. Um, so we, on the chair of their uh, Aussie Pride uh, group, we're so um, blessed, I suppose, in terms of being able to have a, a, an organisation that does support us and be able to actually you know, celebrate alongside with us as well. For people who want to move to that space, what is the inter- interconnectivity like in terms of getting access to high-speed broadband? With our location, it's very interesting because we are such a geographical area, so large. Um, it's it's hard to be able to you know get people, especially if they're quite remote and such like that, to be able to be connected. Mm-hmm. A lot of that is now gotten a lot better because of technology mm. um, to be able to actually be, you know, pick up your phone or, or get onto Zoom or anything like that to be able to actually connect with someone, um, it, you know, even if it isn't face to face, it allows you to be able to actually have a communication or a chat or whatever it is that you need to. Telehealth is so much important, so important mm. in that in, in our region because of that, because it may be an hour's drive, two hours drive to your local GP to be mm. able to go and do an appointment. If you're able to pick up your phone or get in front of your laptop and able to have that communication or a, a, an assessment or whatever it might be, allows mm-hmm. you to be able to do that. So yeah. the, the technology behind that and, and, and the advancement of our internet services is has been so quick, I suppose, in some aspects. It, some people would argue that it's not quick enough, but it's been able to actually have those those things at, at, at your fingertips, really, to be able to say, yep, okay, or, or I need to be able to talk to Ricky or I might need to talk to my mum or mm. I might need to talk to my doctor. So it allows you to be able to do those types of things so quickly in terms of that interconnecting. So. Mm. And now, Clinton, where is your journey? Where do you see yourself for the next six to 12 months? In terms of uh, uh, with Gippsland Pride, we'll mm. be, still be there. We'll be still um, doing a lot of things like our gala, which mm. is coming up. Um, we're just already planning our next Rainbow Brick Road uh, survey, mm-hmm. um, which is uh, very important uh, to back up the work that we've done so far, but also be able to broaden the horizons working forward as well. Um, and we're continually working with our local uh, government organisations and, and such like that as well to be able to obviously make sure that people are welcome, people are given safe spaces to be able to actually be themselves. We do a lot of training with local organisations as well, mm. giving training things like LGBTQI 101 um, and, and such like that to be able to make sure that, you know, people are educated and know more about what we do. And the other thing, if there's people listening out there who'd love to volunteer some time oh, and yes. get involved, can they, do Gippsland Pride Initiative take on volunteers? Oh, yes, yes, certainly. So we do have um, volunteers register, but also we have our membership register as well. So Oh, great. Um, so so you can, people can join up. Oh, yes, certainly can. Yep. So what through. about if you're a fan that you're living in, say, West Footscray, <laughs> but you really wanted <laughs> to be involved with Gippsland? Can members, is it specific to just Gippsland? Not at all. We've got people that are based from from Melbourne, even to other areas within Victoria, even in Tasmania. So it's it's a, it's it's amazing that people can still be involved. Um, but it, 
it allows us to be able to obviously open it up to a lot of people within our area. We're still going to be based and looked in, in that, but by all means, any um, any people who want to, we're not we're not going to exclude anyone in that aspect if you want to lend a hand. That's the message that we want to give to everyone today who's listening. Support your local, regional and rural uh, communities. Become a member if you have some time, volunteer. But most importantly, visit. Make the time, attend visit spaces, go to the events like the huge gala event, which I'm excited about because that's show your support and we really need your support by people coming there, spending money, but most importantly, making connections and really supporting our communities there. And as we're about to kind of close, I just want to now, let's take us back to the young Clint. And I remember um, being a Facebook friend of yours, I saw this beautiful photo of you as a young boy. Um, what would you tell that boy in the photo now if about where, if what he was perhaps feeling? I'd be telling that young Clinton to be his authentic self and to really, you know, live on your own terms and not someone else's. I think that's the most important mm -hmm. thing. Um, for so many years, I hid who I was and, 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 and that's why I'm so proud to be who I am now. Um, so... Yeah, I think that's the, the underlying message that I would have to the young Clinton today. Clinton Savage, it's been an absolute pleasure having you on Quest by Community. Uh, Clinton is a remarkable man. Um, please support his journey, but most importantly, get involved with Gippsland Pride and show the love. This is Ricky Spencer signing off. Thank you so much. Mm -hmm.